Edge banding is like playing the harmonica. Anyone can blow into it and sound as good as Bob Dylan. But not just anybody can sound as good as John Popper of Blues Traveler. Maybe that wasn't the best analogy, but I hope you get what I'm talking about here. I'm gonna show you how to master one of the most difficult skills in edge banding, and it has to do with this situation we're looking at right here. So stick around, I'm gonna show you step by step. Let's get started. This here is your basic cabinet box, and the easy part is edge banding two of the sides, but then you have the two other sides. Here's the issue. There is a space between here and here that you have to butt up against and you have to cut your edge banding to be exactly perfect, not one hair too short. So how do you do that? Because once you make that cut, you've just wasted an entire piece of edge banding if it's even a hair too short because you're not going to want to see the gap here and you're not going to see a gap here. So let me show you exactly what we have to do to make this perfect every time. The first thing you're gonna do is cut your piece of edge banding. Now, not to the exact length, we're gonna go plenty big, so we have plenty of space. Just put it on top, give yourself about an inch or more over here, give yourself about an inch or more over here, snap it off, and now you have a piece that's plenty long to start working with, step one. The next step is, this piece is obviously sometimes not gonna be a perfect 90 degrees to butt up against here. That seam is gonna be awkward looking, so just do your best to cut off a piece so that you can get that seam to look just like this. Once you get a good 90 degree cut, I'm actually gonna cut a little bit of a different angle. Once you get that, there we go, that looks pretty good. Once you get that, you're ready to start with the next step. Now this is critical. You're gonna iron this section, but not like you normally would. I want you to take your hot iron and place it right there and leave it on that seam. We're not gonna iron down the rest of this. We're only gonna iron this one spot. If you start ironing back and forth, this piece is gonna slip and slide as you're pressing that iron and it's gonna create that gap and it's gonna be hard to get it all the way you want it. So just focus on this one spot, let the melt glue, let the glue melt and you'll see, like I, I'm looking at a little gap right here. So I'm gonna, I can even push, I can even push it right into that seam just to get it just right. And now we have a really good seam butted up against here. Now, listen, leave this alone for about a minute or two. You're gonna wanna let this glue dry and set up. So just leave it alone. Just leave that one section alone and let it dry, let it cool just a little bit so that this won't slide anymore and that seam will stay perfect. It's been about two minutes and this isn't going anywhere. The glue is set and firm. So now we're gonna take our iron and we're gonna iron the rest of this seam to about mm, an eighth of an inch if not uh, a, a sixteenth of an inch, right up until this next edge banding seam. Right about here. That's a good spot. We don't want to overlap this, but just up until there. At this point with your roller, you're gonna to wanna to just get a really good contact on here. Kind of break those edges, go along the seams here. Get a good, you wanna get good contact. So this is standard edge banding. I want you to get one of these razor blades. You can get them at any big box store, hardware store, tool store. And I want you to find this line you're gonna place it basically along this line, but not right at that line. You're gonna go past it this way, just a little bit. Let's just say, and we'll do about a 90 degree angle. Let's just say about a 16th pass. And I want you to score it by hammering it down. Not too deep, we don't wanna go into this veneer here, but just past. We score that line and we're gonna try our best to kinda of work it in there. You may have to go over it again. 
because we want to cut that piece. We're almost there. There we go. So you want that overlap, and I'm going to show you how to fix that. With that same process, we're going to shave off little increments, but we're never going to go all the way to where you want it to be. It's still going to sit a little proud, but we're going to kind of work our way up to it by using that same principle of just cutting off that end piece. Just getting a little closer, but we're not going to go past it. Just a hair. Let's see here. We got a, we got a little bit of a lip. We're going to take a little bit more. Let's see here, we are, we're about there on this side, but we're going to take a little bit more off of this side, just a hair, still maintaining a little bit of a lip. And when I say lip, meaning it's actually going up and over. All right, I think that's good enough. So you see it's still got a little bit of a lip. Now here's the secret right here, let me show you. See that lip right there? That's what you want. You want it to come, be coming up just a little bit. Once we have that micro lip, take your iron and we're gonna iron that spot and it's gonna loosen up the glue and we're gonna be able to just mesh it right in there so it fits perfectly. If it doesn't, we can always trim off a little bit more. Oh my goodness, look at that. It just did it by itself. It literally sank right into that spot when we melted it. I'm gonna zoom in in just a moment and show you that, but we're gonna give it a little bit of a press so it'll sit firmly. Look at that, that seam is perfect. It is right on that edge. There is no gap. It couldn't be closer. And that's what we're looking for. But we're not done just yet because there's one more challenge that I'm gonna show you how to overcome. I want you to take your standard edge band trimmer, whatever you use, we're gonna trim off this edge and then we're gonna trim off the inside edge. But this corner right here and this corner right here is where a lot of people get hung up on. So let me show you how to do that. Of course, what we're gonna look at is grain direction. And I think if we cut from this direction right here, we're going to get the best. It's not going to tear out as much. These things are a little finicky. And if you watch my other videos, you know about my relationship with edge band trimmers. But this looks like a good grain direction to trim that off. That's pretty good. All right, now we're going to go on the inside. So these trimmers aren't going to go all the way to the end. We're only going to get to about here, but I'm going to show you how to take care of this end spot. So once again, looking at grain direction, what angle we're going to come through. It's grain direction is going this way, so we're going to go that way. Start on one end. So we can only get about this far. Break that off. I'm going to show you how to deal with this. Come back on the other side. Once again, we're only going to get so far. Break off the end. Let's work on this corner. Let me show you what to do. There's two tools we're going to use in this situation. Number one, we're going to take a straight edge razor here, and we're just going to lightly and carefully come over here and take off that edge. But it's not going to be the way we want it just yet. And you can shave on that just a little bit. All right, it's still rough. How do you sand in there? Because if you take a sanding block, it's going to have a hard time getting right here. Here's the trick. Take a file, just any old file that's a, that has a flat edge, and don't, don't come at a hard angle like this. You want to go pretty close to the veneer, and you're just going to look and lightly go over, 
you're going to look for that glue squeeze out, that dried glue that kind of comes out, because that's what you want to get. Just give it a light. And that's pretty much about all you need. Once you take this sander here, take your block sander. Oh, I love these things. These are great. I'm going to show you a tip about these as well. You're going to like it. And we're going to do that to the other side as well. I love using these sanding pads and I'll leave a link in the description for all of my edge banding tools, but these are great. And I want you to pay attention to the fact that this is all gummed up with glue and sawdust and this is 220 grit. I'm using sand that just Diablo. I'll be honest with you when it has all the glue and all the sawdust all caked in here and I sand along here, I actually get a better finish. If you use a too uh, low of a grit, even 220 sometimes, it'll take off more than you want. But this actually gives it a buttery, smooth finish. After you go over it, just bring your thumb, kind of drag it along. You're going to feel for any rough spots. And it'll take it, it'll just, It'll come out so smooth and so nice. It's going to take a little more time when it's this cakey, but the, the results are actually that much better. And then coming on the inside as well. We just mastered two very difficult edge banding skills. Number one, we got smooth, buttery inside corners. And number two, we have zero hairline gaps when it comes to getting that perfect length of edge banding in these particular cabinet situations. I've made several edge banding videos and one in particular that I want you to watch right here where I give you 16 rapid fire edge banding tips. You're gonna love it. Click on the video, watch all the other edge banding videos as well as everything we have to offer. Thanks for watching. Till next time.